If you are thinking about relocating to Georgia, then stay tuned. You're definitely going to want to learn about the top five pros and top five cons about living on St. Simons Island. My name is Cassie Long with Horizon Realty, and I help individuals and families from all over the country relocate right here to South Georgia. So if you're thinking of making a move, all of my information is down in the description box below, and I would love to connect and help you make a move right here to South Georgia. In today's video, we are going to talk about the top five pros and the top five cons to living on St. Simons Island, Georgia. So first, let's talk about where is St. Simons. Located in the Golden Isles of Georgia, recently voted the favorite island in the continental U.S., you have St. Simons Island. And within St. Simons Island, there's also Little St. Simons and Sea Island. So we won't touch on those too much, but just know that those are included in St. Simons Island, but they are kind of their own thing. Little St. Simons is only accessible by boat. And then Sea Island is actually a private island. You have to either be a member of Sea Island or you have to live on Sea Island to even get onto it. Now it's not a causeway. You just drive right in, but that is located on St. Simons Island. But for today, we're just going to talk about St. Simons Island. Let's get started with the pros. One reason why you might love living here on St. Simons Island is for the natural beauty. There are miles and miles of beautiful, gorgeous beaches here in St. Simons, and you have access to all of those. There are tons of public access beach points. There's Massingale Park, there's Gould's Inlet, and there's lots of other street access points for the beach available as well. That is one of the perks is obviously being right here in a beach town, beach community. It's super fun. You can walk around to a lot of places. It's not uncommon to be on the island and, you know, have to slow down for golf carts or have to slow down for people biking or walking. It's a highly accessible island. Now, there are different parts of the island. You've got the north end, you've got the south end of the island, and they each have their own little flair. But overall, the beauty is is definitely there and it's got that coastal town feel that you will definitely love. Another thing that you might really like is the community. This is Georgia. It's a small town feel because it is a small town. You know, St. Simons Island is located within Glen County, which is actually a pretty large county, but St. Simons itself is pretty small. To get onto St. Simons, you have to go over the causeway. And the causeway going backwards will take you over to Brunswick, which is the mainland. And that's where you'll do a lot of your shopping. But on St. Simons Island, there is a Winn-Dixie. There's a Harris Teeter. You've got all of those things local right there. And the community is just super tight-knit because it is such a small island. And it is really big in into football. So it's not uncommon to be walking around and have your neighbors say, hey, go dogs, you know. So it's a it's a fun little coastal town community. And that's one of the things that a lot of people really love about St. Simons. The local food scene. So if you are in Glen County and you want delicious food, you're going to St. Simons Island. There are a number of top rated restaurants here on this little island there is georgia's sea grill there's halyards cj's i don't know if they've won any awards but cj's pizza is the bomb there are so many amazing restaurants and of course you do have your chain restaurants as well but if you want nice fine dining and also small town coastal you know right off of the ocean seafood you can get that all right here on st simon's island weather one thing that you will like is the weather but you also might not like the weather so this is a pro and a con if we have great weather year round we do experience almost four seasons so if you don't like cold weather this is the place for you it is mild pretty much all year round except for the summer and then it's very 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 hot from probably June, July, August, and even a little bit of September, it is extremely hot. I'm talking like near 100 degree days and the weather app. Actually, this year has been crazy because my weather app alerted me just last week that there was an extreme heat wave. I've never gotten an alert like that on my weather app before, but that's something to consider that the weather, while it is mild, we have mild winters and that is really great. It does not snow here. It does not get frigid cold. You can go to the beach 
in October, November. Shoot, I have pictures of myself like eight months pregnant on the beach in February, where in other places it's snowing in February. I do have mild winters, but just be warned, we have extremely hot summers as well. Pro and a con, depending on where you come from and if that's what you like. And lastly, the quality of life. That is going to be pro number five. Because it is a small town, there's not a ton of traffic. Now, it is a small island, so traffic does get a little bit heavy, you know, during tourist season. But in comparison to larger cities, if you're talking about traffic like from Atlanta or Savannah, no, there is no traffic. When we first moved here, I remember people saying, oh yeah, just be aware of the traffic. I'm like, you guys, this is a red light. This is not traffic. I came from Atlanta. I know traffic. It does get a little bit more congested during those tourist seasons, such as summer and even a little bit into the fall. But overall, you can bike, you can walk, you can drive your golf cart around. And overall, it's not that crowded. It's a much slower pace of life. People just move slower down here. Uh, a lot of people actually retire here. We have a lot of young families. So everything is just a little bit slower. And that takes me into some things that you might not like about living on St. Simons Island. So I've got five cons coming for you. The first one is the cost of living. Because it's an island, it's a hotspot destination. It's a tourist place. The cost of living is a little bit higher. And also, it's an island. You cannot grow an island. There's only so much land. So the value of that land is definitely there. And because Sea Island is right there in St. Simons Island, you know, you've got $17 million houses on Sea Island. So if that's your vibe, definitely reach out. But on St. Simons Island, the, like the lowest you can get um, a house for on St. Simons Island is probably going to be around $350,000. And that's probably going to be a condo. Um, so the typical house is about four hundred thousand and up. You're typically looking between four hundred and seven hundred thousand, depending on what you need. But like I said, there are other options. There's condos, there's townhomes, things like that. Uh, but the lowest you're looking at is probably three hundred and fifty thousand, which for some people might not be in your budget. And for other people, you might be looking on Sea Island at the seventeen million dollar asset. All right, con number two is. I, I'm going to loop this in as traffic, but we just talked about the traffic situation. But what I really want to talk to you about is the causeway. Because the island is only accessible by the causeway, one way on, one way off, and it's two lanes each way. Um, if something happens on that causeway or they're doing major road work, it is backed up. So we don't live in Brunswick anymore. But we did live in Brunswick and I was working, teaching yoga at a studio on the island. So every morning I would have to, you know, coming from Brunswick, hop on the causeway to go over to the island. There were probably, I mean, it was only like two or three times, but there were two or three times that there was a really bad wreck and the causeway was completely shut down. That's all they can do is, is shut it down. So I physically could not make it to work from Brunswick. So just know that that might be a little bit of a con. Now it doesn't happen all the time. But with there only being one way on, one way off, things happen and sometimes that causeway shuts down. Like for hurricanes, for instance, major flooding, sometimes they have to close that causeway and you're either stuck on the island or you're stuck off the island. Another thing you might hate is the limited job opportunities. So obviously with it being a touristy spot, we thrive off of hospitality. So there are tons of jobs within the hospitality industry. You've got hotels, you know, Sea Island offers a lot of jobs and well-paying jobs that that is a large golfing community so there are jobs within that but it's not going to offer a ton of jobs at a high paying corporate level so if you're looking for that corporate style job you might have to look into um, Jacksonville and maybe even Brunswick but even Brunswick is a little bit limited when you're talking about corporate America style jobs now there are some more mills and ports and things like that in Brunswick and that could only be a 15 20 minute drive but Savannah and Jacksonville are both close by if you're looking for a big corporate job but one of the pros of that is since 2020 and the pandemic a lot of people are working from home so you could be working at the beach so I think that's a pretty good pro all right, and another thing that you definitely want to be aware of is hurricane season. So we don't get hit every single hurricane season, but obviously being right here on Georgia's coast, 
hurricanes are a major risk and property damage is a real threat. Um, so I've lived here, like I said, like six years, and I think I've evacuated three of those. And I honestly can't remember. I think maybe one was mandatory. The other two, my husband's with the fire department, so he would always get stuck working on shifts. So it just made more sense for the kids and I to go, you know, over to my parents' house where we had other people since he was called on shift, you know, for the whole hurricane time. Look up the past hurricane seasons and really do a deep dive into that. I can provide you with some flood zones. You want to definitely look at that when you're looking at different neighborhoods. Um, obviously, the closer you are to the coast, the more of a threat that becomes. The flooding, you know, does happen. It's not horrible on all areas of the island, but there are specific spots that are worse than others. And like I said, the causeway is susceptible to flooding. And lastly, the last con is the bug. These bugs down here in South Georgia are so real and so annoying. Sometimes it makes being outside unbearable. Um, so when you're looking for a home, if you, you know, don't mind the bugs and you still decide you want to move here, if you're looking for a home, definitely look for a screened in porch. If your home does not have a screened in porch, make arrangements, start setting aside money. You're going to want $5,000 to just green in the whole baby right away or else you're not going to sit outside and enjoy the beautiful coastal views that you just paid half a million dollars for. So definitely consider the bugs and invest in a, in a good natural bug repellent because we have mosquitoes, we have deer flies, and we have gnats. The gnats are the worst and they're pretty much out all year long. Even, you know, we're talking about St. Simons Island, but on Jekyll Island, when we first moved down here, we were like, oh, but we're going to go to Driftwood Beach. If you've ever heard of Driftwood Beach, it's got the beautiful trees, Driftwood. Um, and it, it's gorgeous. It really is. But we went out there and the sand gnats were so, it was unbearable. It was not enjoyable. It was not fun. But now we know there are certain times of day that you know you just don't want to be outside. Um, if it's not a particularly coastal breeze kind of day, then the gnats are just going to eat you alive. Invest in some no gnats, invest in some bug spray, and just know that that is one of the cons of living on St. Simon's Island. And lastly, this is just kind of a bonus because I want to throw it out there. One of the things that we touched on is golf carts. This can be a major pro and it can be a major con. When it's tourist season, there are golf carts all over. And as someone that was working on the island, it got a little bit frustrating because people are just moseying along on their golf cart, going to dinner, going to have drinks. And I'm sitting here, I live here, I'm trying to get to work, you know. So just something to be really cautious of is you can decide whether that lifestyle is a yes or a no for you. The golf cart kind of community is amazing, but just be aware that they do drive on the real roads on St. Simon. I am all for golf carts driving around the, the community and cruising in the neighborhoods. I think it's great. The tourism industry brings a lot of money, not only to St. Simons, but to county, to our county as a whole. But as a resident, that is something to be aware of as people on vacation tend to put their children on golf carts and drive them up and down the real roads outside of a neighborhood. Going back to that slower pace of life, that does also leak into just you got to drive a little bit slower, allow a little bit more time to get from point A to point B as far as work because you're in work live mode and they're in vacation leisure modes. Just kind of finding the balance between those two. But I know that you will love living on St. Simons Island, Georgia. And if you want to know more about investing in a vacation home on St. Simons Island, then definitely watch this video right here. And I hope to talk to you soon. All of my information is down in the description box below. Let's set up a coffee chat virtual or in person. And I would love to get to know you and help you relocate right here to sunny South Georgia.